All right, all right, all right. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Dr. F. Scott Feel here going live tonight on StreamYard. I'm going into the Facebook group for the Professors of Profit. There is a little bit of a delay on StreamYard, so uh, it also does a little bit of a funky thing I've noticed with the comments. So I'm going to actually pull this up on Facebook Live as well. Make sure I got everything going right here. Alrighty. Give everybody just a few minutes to get into the, the webinar here. Make sure I can get into the webinar. There we go. All right. Awesome. So I am going to set this up here, hopefully. Assuming that I can do that here. There we go. I think this will allow me to, it does something where you've got to like uh, approve your name so that it, it can be seen during the comments. So I'm going to do that so that I can hopefully see the comments on Facebook and we'll go from there. All right, let's see. All right. Can everybody hear and see me okay? That's the first step. Go ahead and drop a comment. Just let me know. Yes, I can hear and see you. This is my first time using StreamYard, so I'm just trying to get used to it here. There we go. All right. Set up this here next to uh, the computer so that I can see the live and the comments. And we'll kind of go from there. There we go. So it's another toasty night here in Texas. Uh, all right, cool. Travis, good to see you. Andrea, Yusuf, good to see you guys. Thanks for coming on board tonight. Uh, we'll give everybody another minute or two to, to hop on here, and then we'll get started. Um, next thing I want to set up is the PowerPoint presentation here, and then I'll share my screen with you guys, and away we will go. Uh, looking forward to this. This has been a long time in the works here. Um, I'd say probably, well, I don't know, three years in the making, something like that. I've done a couple of um, one-offs and really gone into a deeper dive on some revenue streams that I think are worth it. Uh, but tonight we're really going to hit up the top three uh, that I think are the best ways to leverage your time um, you know, and your skill sets in order to... Uh, m make enough money to put a dent in your student loans and help pay them off quicker. All right. I'm going to open up our slideshow here. See if we can share my screen. There we go. That's a good start. All right, we'll give everybody another minute or two. And uh, yeah, then we'll get down to business. While we're waiting here, I'd love for you guys to just drop a comment. Let me know where you're coming from tonight, uh, where everybody's tuning in from. Uh, obviously, I am in Waco, Texas. Uh, which is, like I said, extremely hot these days. We've been in the uh, mid to high 90s, but uh, last week it was 100, 110, and I swear it felt worse. Um, 
this week than it did last week, and I don't know why. I don't know why that is. There we go. Hello, Belisa. How are you? Got folks dropping in from the ATL. I love to see that. I used to work in that area. Uh, we lived on the south side, Wichita, Kansas. Aspen, good to see you. Houston, excellent, excellent. Beautiful. South Carolina, my uh, family's hometown now. They live in Charleston area, Johns Island, South Carolina. Love to go back, love to visit. Gainesville, Florida, got to be hot and humid down that area. <laughs> awesome. Good to see everybody tuning in here. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, not exactly sure about how long this is going to take, so I want to make sure that I'm giving you guys the most bang for your buck here and trying to get through this as quickly as we can, give you the most value and information that I can. Here we go. Let's see if we get a good screen share here. I know there's a little bit of a delay, so I want to make sure that we are good to go. All right, looks like we are ready to rock and roll. All right, so tonight's webinar is one that I've been working on for a long time, and the top three revenue streams kind of change back and forth. Right? It's kind of a, an ebb and a flow to them, right? Sometimes it's just, you know, certain streams work better. Sometimes there's other streams that work better. But at the end of the day, there, there's generally three to five that I rotate through my top three based on what's going on. And I mean, COVID has had a huge impact on a lot of this stuff lately. Um, and I'm sure you guys will see that. So the name of the webinar, uh, The Feel Good Method, How I Paid Down an Extra $12,000 Worth of Student Loan Debt in the Last Six Months with a Simple Side Gig Method. My promise to you, by the end of the night, I will have given you enough information and educated you enough and provided enough value that you will be able to confidently start at least one side gig that can help you to start paying down your student loans. Um, and if, if you guys are like me, uh, you've got a pretty hefty amount of student loans. And the goal here is going to be to get rid of them as quick as possible, right? And at the end of the, the webinar, there's going to be a no pressure offer. If you want to work with me further um, on a more direct level, um, you'll have an opportunity to do that. But it's only for those who through the entire webinar. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later at the end, at the very end. So stick around. I promise to give you guys enough information that you'll be able to start at least one side, gig, but I think probably more, and you'll see why. So is this really possible? Um, I, on my last cohort of students that went through the master class, uh, I had a bunch of them that were treating full time. They were kind of fed up with it. Um, they just didn't know how to do any more that, than they were doing. They were trading time for money, just like I was. Um, and they were just kind of getting burned out and getting sick of it. And uh, one of my students, Craig, has since uh, completing the master class, shifted his focus to a Catholic-based blog where he's writing about his faith and how it affects his um, self-improvement and uh, how that kind of translates even further to becoming a bigger, better person, and how that then translates to his healthcare provision. And uh, it's a really neat blog. Um, love for you guys to check it out. I'll, go, I'll drop some links for that later, but let's just take a look here. I've embedded his, uh, his testimonial here, so let's just see if this video will play.
the next student I wanted to talk about a little bit is Farley. Uh, this woman is off the chain, literally. She is doing so many things right now since completing the master class that uh, I can't give her enough credit for, for all the implementation she's done. And this has been a long time in the works. Um, you know, she, or we just fine tuned a few of them and, and put a focus on the ones that were a little bit more important. Currently, she is seeing patients, both horses and riders. Uh, she focuses in the rodeo niche. Um, she's got a blog. She's got her book she's working on now and an e-commerce uh, company that, that deals with shirts for not only her business, but for some of the rodeos that she attends and stuff. Um, and the biggest thing as of late has been her podcast. Uh, that's been taken off big time lately. So we've been focusing a little bit on, on that. Take a look at Farley's testimonial here. So one of the things that I've been doing lately, uh, because I've been so strapped for time, has been lead generation. Um, and, I, and that basically is finding companies that need leads uh, or new customers and helping them through digital advertising to bring in those leads. Um, and the last six months, I'd advertised with one, two, three, four different companies um, and I've been averaging about $2,000 per month per contract. So, um, you know, it, it'll be something like a $3,000 contract for a month. Then it'll be a $5,000 contract for a month. Then maybe I skip a month. Then I come back and find another $3,000. It kind of ebbs and flows a little bit. But these contracts are very easy. They're very doable. Um, you know, I go on a month-by-month -month basis so that there's no pressure for, for the company to keep signed up. And, and you know, sometimes the, the traffic becomes so heavy that they end up having to just stop the advertising because they can't handle the workload. So, you know, that's one of the things that that can happen is, is sometimes business can be too good, um, you know, and, and I think lead generation, especially nowadays during COVID times, um, is going to be highly sought after in the healthcare field, uh, especially, you know, physical therapy, um, you know, and, and dentistry, orthodontist, things like that. So now is a pretty good time uh, if if you want to get involved in some of this stuff. And truth be told, I didn't know anything about lead generation three years ago. Um, I started learning a little bit uh, about digital marketing and online advertising, and I did that for my own business so that I could realize and figure out how to get new patients in the door. Um, and then once I got it down, two of my former classmates who owned PT clinics saw what I was doing and asked if I could do their advertising for them. And that's where my lead generation deeper dives. Uh, and I was able to do some self-education on, on lead generation. And that's been working out pretty well so far. So let's look at the current and painful reality of healthcare, right? Student loan debt continues to rise year over year. The debt to income ratio, especially for physical therapy, is getting way worse. We can't default on our student loans, right? It's the only kind of loan that you can't default on. Uh, no matter what happens, you've got to keep paying those student loans year after year. 
Now, typical healthcare jobs are kind of capped financially, right? As a physical therapist, I mean, the highest paid physical therapy jobs I've seen were upwards of 140, maybe 150, and that's in a big city that can support it, you know? Um, realistically, you know, this COVID pandemic has shown that even healthcare workers and even healthcare providers are not recession proof, right? We're not bulletproof, we're not furlough proof. Uh, people were getting laid off left and right. People were being put on furlough. They were, you know, taking pay cuts. And we got into physical therapy and, and healthcare in general because we felt it was a safe job. We felt that there would always be a need for us. And even though there is and has been, uh, it's just not exactly as safe as we thought it was. So at the end of the day, you can't just rely on patient care every day. You just can't, you know? So, you know, the other thing that was kind of disheartening is that we don't get paid any more for how good we are, especially, again, as physical therapists, right? It's based strictly on, on time and how many patients we can see in that time and how many units we can build for. So if I get somebody qu better quicker, I don't get anything. I don't even get a pat on the back. Usually if it's a private practice, you know, they'll question you why you're getting people better so quick, you know? Um, it just, it, it, it's almost a thankless job, you know? Uh, but are we doomed? I would argue, no, we're not. We're going to be okay. So what what gives me the authority to kind of teach on these topics, right? What, what have I done lately that, that allows me to kind of come in here and educate everybody on these things, right? Well, first off, uh, you know, for you who have heard my story, uh, I went, I was an English major first, right, at Wake Forest University. Then I went on to get my master's in physical therapy at East Carolina. Uh, I was scheduled to get a transitional doctorate from there. My dad had some health issues. He passed away. I wasn't able to finish the transitional doctorate in the allotted time. They gave me the window of opportunity closed. So I ended up having to finish my transitional doctorate through St. Augustine later on down the line, which kind of was a blessing in disguise. Because while I was there, the head of the EDD program came and said, hey, are you interested in teaching ever? And I said, no, not really. But, uh, you know, I guess if my back gave out or my hands gave out, my knees gave out, and I just couldn't do therapy anymore, I guess I could fall back on teaching. You know, plus it would have made my dad proud and happy. I think. Um, so I went through their EDD program, and, and three of the classes from the transitional DPT overlapped. So it would have made a four-year program down to a three-year program. Well, the problem there was the dissertation. I uh, ran into all sorts of roadblocks and speed bumps, and it was just the worst experience ever. Uh, but somehow, kicking and screaming, they dragged me across the finish line, and I ended up with an educational doctorate. So they can't take that away from me now at this point. Um, but yeah, on top of that, I've written a number one best-selling uh, book on Amazon. It's called PT Educator Student Debt Eliminator, Multiple Revenue Streams for Healthcare Clinicians and Academicians. Uh, Craig alluded to that a little bit earlier in his testimonial. Um, and I've been executing these revenue streams for the last couple years now. Um, and the last six months in particular, without that much effort and that much work, I've been able to pay off $12,000 worth of student loans. So I actually am not a student loan expert, right? That's not my MO. Um, you know, I actually had to, to, to go to Joe Ranke at Fitbus for, for help with that um, and, and the vision that I had and, and how I was going to follow this game plan. Um, and it really started when I, I took a step back and I thought to myself, okay, you know, uh, physical therapy is a great job. I'm going to make a great salary, right? Um, I thought I'd be able to live comfortably on a physical therapist salary. I thought I'd be able to cover all my expenses, right? Take care of my family, um, you know, and have the time freedom to pursue other hobbies like golf and fishing, right? Well, that wasn't exactly the case, right? There were several things that happened along the way called the game of life that, that really threw me a couple of curveballs here. First off, I graduated with two doctoral degrees and $140,000 worth of student loan debt. And truth be told, I didn't really even want to use those two degrees traditionally. Uh, so that was scary at times. Um, but I was able to work through that once I realized that it's just how you leverage your knowledge and your degrees, right? And there were times where I, I was afraid, I was fearful that I chose the wrong profession, right? I thought these degrees would just kind of pay for themselves. And, you know, I'd come out making $100,000 and my loans would be $100,000 and I'd be able to pay them off over 20, 30 years, whatever it may be. 
Um, and that wasn't the case. Uh, you know, there, there were some speed bumps in the road for sure. So, you know, pursuing the educational doctorate, I had that as a fallback plan, right? In case I couldn't do physical therapy. But then I got to thinking, well, if I'm not using this EDD, like, is it going to waste? Like, it was a, was it a waste of an extra $30,000? Or, you know, what was I thinking doing this? And, I, you know, the bigger issue for me has always been my family, right? Like, they have to come first. I always have to make sure they're, they're you know, taken care of because my wife's a type 1 diabetic. She's a stay-at-home mom which is great. And we've, we decided that very early on that she was going to do that. And we, you know, I'm so glad that we did. Uh, but type one diabetes is super expensive. And even with medical benefits and coverage, it's still pretty pricey. So it's not only do I have to find a job with good benefits, um, you know, they've got to have good benefits for type one diabetics specifically. So that's kind of been my, my MO and my journey the last three years is trying to find a job that had really good benefits. And uh, even with owning my own businesses, we tried to buy our own insurance because I was already paying $2,200 a month for a family of four. I figured if I'm going to do that, I might as well just buy my own on the, on the open market. Well, they would cover me and the kids, no problem, but they wouldn't cover my wife. They said she had to go on Obamacare. And for anybody who knows how type 1 diabetes works, Obamacare is not the best issue, uh, the best option for for diabetics so needless to say we haven't been able to, to completely leave the nine to five just yet and i'm okay with that uh, that's just the new you know grounds that i play in that's the new uh playing field and the rules and I, you know i'm jumping through those hoops and we'll talk a little bit about that uh later uh again maxing out at maybe 120,000 a year right every job that i've done in the last three years despite 15 years of of experience pretty much tops out at some point, right? There's only so many patients you can see in so many hours and, you know, make X amount of dollars for your employer. So, you know, while home health looks great, $120,000 plus salary, you're also working 70 hours a week because you drive around all day seeing patients, then you come home and you have to document forever. So you're still just trading that time for money. And is it really worth it? Probably not if you do the math, right? Travel therapy, Loved it. Did it early on in my career. Now that I have a family, not really an option for me. You know, the pay's great. The pay is amazing. The benefits are great. Uh, the perks, you know, the the tax free uh, stipends are amazing. But you know, we've got a really great type one diabetic team here in Waco, and my wife loves her doctors and her endocrinologist and all her you know medical people. So she doesn't want to leave and go anywhere because she feels like it's her diabetes is managed well where we're at. So again, travel therapy, not a huge option for me. All this being said, got me to a point where I was really starting to feel, uh, you know, pretty stressed. I was feeling like, all right, well, maybe, maybe it's one of those things where, you know, the, there will just be a path shown to me, right? There'll be a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, maybe if I just keep working harder and, and doing the right thing, it'll pay off. And, and really it didn't, feel that way. I felt like I was just working harder for not that much in return. I felt stressed. I felt, uh, you know, a little bit of anxiety and tightness in the chest. Um, there were tensions at home about the finances. And that's the biggest issues for me. I didn't feel it was fair to my family to have to deal with these, you know, student loan problems that I took on. You know, I, I took the loans on. I, I opted to take them on. And so that was that was something for me that I felt wasn't fair to them. Um, if you guys have ever had any of these issues, these feelings, these emotions about your student loans, go ahead and comment hashtag emotion down below. Just let me know that, uh, that you guys have felt some of these feelings, you know, whether it be anger or sadness, depression, uh, anxiety. Uh, you're not alone. I promise. There's a bunch of us out there. So just drop a hashtag emotion down there and let, let us know, you know, that you guys have felt this too, that you've been through it. So my current situation, uh, I've found a skilled nursing facility that gives me a little bit more time freedom, right? It's eight to four. I have a little bit of flexibility with that schedule. Um, and it ends up coming to about $9,000 a month pre-tax with just about 40 hours a week. That being said, uh, I started doing some teaching online. Um, I've taught adjuncts for Baylor University, which is right up the street here. But ironically enough, the program was online, so I could have taught it anywhere. Uh, I've got my blog that brings in a little bit of uh, 
monthly income, my affiliate marketing, which brings in a little bit of income, um, the lead generation, which like I said, is a, is a big chunk lately, thankfully, uh, for, you know, for me as a, as a monthly income, uh, I do course creation. I help other, um, healthcare practitioners create online courses. Um, I have a podcast, uh, that, that has some, some income coming in from it. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. I do uh, some consulting gigs, monthly consulting gigs. Um, and then I've got my mobile PT practice, which uh, that currently, I'm not really seeing many patients with that because of the COVID virus. So uh, the mobile PT practice has been put on hold, which like I said, is actually, you know, it's good that I have all these other streams of revenue. Otherwise I'd, I'd be in a little bit of trouble, right? And, and I can't just rely on patient care, um, you know, because even right now there we are skilled nursing facilities up to 30 patients with with covid positive tests so uh they're being quarantined off to one whole section and uh, i just you know i don't know what the future holds for us there so we'll have to wait and see but um you know i would say th there is an option right to do prn work for sure but again you're still trading time for money right so if I can do, let's just say the lead generation stuff, and I can put in an extra 15 hours a week, and that brings me, you know, 3,000 a month, that actually equates to a better situation, probably, right, than uh, the 40-hour work week that I would put in at a job, right? So again, it's it's not directly scalable, but at the same time, I'd rather do 15 hours worth of my own work and get paid by myself than to work for somebody else you know, PRN wise and do, you know, 15 hours with them. So, you know, it's not, to me, it's not worth it to, to scale around. Now, PRN, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a great way to start gaining a little momentum and getting some extra money to put toward your student loans. But again, it just comes back to trading time for money. And if I'm going to trade time for money, I want it to be my time doing my own stuff to create my own money. Uh, because I feel like at the end of the day, it's going to be, you know, my time's going to be more valuable than what somebody would pay me for it. So this brings us to the feel good method. Uh, this is in my book. Uh, it's taken me, I don't know, probably 10 years to kind of simplify this down to what it is. And I'll explain it tonight. We'll go through it a little bit. And then I'll show you an example of what mine looks like. The feel good method kind of uses an umbrella, right? And the umbrella is your holding company. So you know, it could be Bob's Therapy LLC or whatever it may be, right? Under the umbrella, there's five columns or four columns or one column or 10 columns, however many side uh, incomes you have or side gigs you have, however many different streams of revenue you want to put together. That's how many columns you'll kind of put down there. The bottom is your assets trough. That's how much money you're kind of bringing in. And it all sits there uh, for you to do whatever you want with it. Um, the little faucet at the bottom there is saying, hey, don't, don't let those assets leak away too quickly. That's just a little reminder. And then the bucket at the side is your, your standard general baseline income. Or, you know, if you work a nine to five or if anything that somebody's paying you for and you're an employee, that's the bucket, right? And that bucket's dumping your salary into the assets right now. The goal is obviously to kick the bucket figuratively, right? And get rid of it completely. Uh, you know, I don't know that I'll ever be able to do that because of the type one diabetes situation and having to have good benefits, medical benefits, I may need to keep that bucket for the rest of my life. So the goal for me becomes to minimize that bucket down to as small as possible to work the least possible hours and get the most possible benefits. So it's kind of like trying to find something that's going to help me get, again, the most bang for my buck, right? Then in my free time, I work on my passion projects. I work on my side gigs. I work on my side hustles, all these different streams of revenue. And each tube there, each, each column there has some numbers beside it, right? And those numbers are kind of like a honeydew list. It's the things that you have to do in order that gets that revenue stream flowing and creating assets or money coming in, right? Now, I've also done something here from left to right becomes your most important 
So the most important stream of revenue will be the first one and then the next and then the least as we go from left to right. So you've got to prioritize your streams of revenue um, as well. Not only, you know, to have them under the umbrella or the holding company, but from left to right in priority of importance. Um, and importance may be different, right? It may be, I need this one to keep going to, to brand myself and get this out there. Or it may be this one does the most, this gets the most money for me. So I just have to do that one, right? It's different for everybody. Uh, but your, your priorities should go from left to right so you can keep things in check. This one here is my example. This is kind of what things look like for me right now at present time. You've got the job over there to the left in my my salary, holding my benefits, right? My holding company is called Feel Good Industries, PLLC. Um, now, I just I started a PLLC because the first job I ever did, the first um, side income I ever created was the mobile PT practice. And in Texas, it's recommended that you do a PLLC or, or a professional licensed liability company, um, limited liability company. The reason for the PLLC is it's an extra added layer of protection for uh, doctors, lawyers, physical therapists, dentists, anybody who's got a professional license. That's what it comes down to. But it's different every state. You've got to check with your state. See, I think California, somebody was talking about this in a Facebook group earlier today. California, uh, their physical therapist, if they want to open their own clinic, I think has to be an S Corp, you know? And so it's different for every state. Uh, you just got to talk to the, the state board and, and seats, talk to the business uh, administration and, and see what they require if, if you're looking to set up a, an actual practice of some sort. But your business could just be an LLC and it could be an online business completely, right? Your holding company could just be Joe's Digital Online Stuff, LLC, right? And then each of your streams of revenue underneath could be different digital uh, things that you do. Um, for me... You know, I have one, two, three, four, five, four and a half, five different DBAs or doing business as, uh, which just means it's the same company as Feel Good Industries PLLC, but it's named something else. It's doing a different business operation under something else. And each one is pretty different, right? So I have my mobile PT practice, Epic Therapy and well, uh, Wellness. Um, I have PT Educator, which is my online education. Uh, that's where all my courses are sold for the general public and for other clinicians. I have FGI Consulting, which is where I do a lot of my digital marketing and lead generation stuff through. Um, like I said, I have the HET, the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast. Um, and that podcast was sponsored. And we have an affiliate deal uh, with a company, a telehealth company. Um, and then last but not least, I'm working on a new venture with uh, a couple folks uh, that I can't really talk about yet, but that's going to be another completely separate um, doing business as or DBA. And I have a feeling it's going to go into Feel Good Industries, um, but I'm not sure about that. It just may be the easiest way to get it off the ground, so we'll see. So I wanted to talk about the top three side gains that I'm currently using uh, to help pay down my student loans. Uh, because like I said, there's there's a ton of them. I talk about a, a eight to 10 or so in my book that are viable. Um, but the top three that I'm currently using uh, uh, the last two or three months, uh, the first one happens to be, like I said, lead generation. Businesses need leads, right? They That is the lifeblood of of a business. They need new customers coming in. And a lot of people will argue, oh, well, you don't need new customers. You just use the ones you have already. And, and that's true. I mean, retention is huge, especially in the healthcare field. However, uh, if you play a numbers game, right, and you just go through a bunch of businesses and you ask each one, hey, could you use new leads, new customers coming in? You know, most, most businesses are going to say, yeah, I need that service. And so with lead generation, you know, you can help provide these businesses leads through Facebook and Google ads, right? And again, three years ago, I knew none of this stuff. So if this is all seeming kind of new to you guys, if you're like, whoa, 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 this is way over my head, just comment down below, hashtag new, right? Because listen, I was a new, new guy too. I was a newbie. I didn't know what I was talking about. But the little time that I had to put in to learn this stuff was mind-blowing. It was honestly like four or five hours on a weekend and I was good to go. I, I, I could do the bare minimum. 
since then, I've wanted to get better at it. So I pursued other courses and masterminds and things to learn about it and get better at it. And I have, I've done that. Um, and then I still want to learn more. I still want to get better. I'm always trying to learn. Uh, but you can learn on the fly too, which is cool. Facebook ads, you know, you kind of do split testing to see which one of your ads is working better. And, uh, you know, literally two, three months and I was, I was making some pretty good profit right off the bat. What I generally do is I offer a business uh, a couple different options, but if we stick to just the lead gen option, I generally anywhere from $75 to $100 per lead. I try to guarantee at least 30 leads a month. Now, if you do the math on that, that's about two to $3,000 per month, right? I generally don't have a problem fulfilling 30 leads. I'm usually in the 35 to 40 range, sometimes even 50, and they appreciate that, the over delivery, right? Uh, which then keeps them coming on month after month and signing up every month for your services. Um, but, you know, it's really not that hard. And it, and I started, like I said, with two other physical therapists who own their own, own practice. And then I also, you know, have, have since talked to some people who are not in the healthcare field. Um, I've worked with roofers. I've worked with uh, home renovations. I've done... Um, pool builders. So, you know, this lead generation stuff is not just specific to physical therapy and healthcare. It, it, you know, transcends to, you know, every business pretty much, you know, and I, I found companies that don't even have Facebook business pages, right? So that's another perk that you can throw in. You say, hey, normally, you know, I charge $500 to set up a Facebook business page. But, you know, if you join in on this lead, lead generation package, I'll throw it in for free. Right. So you're, you're constantly giving value to these people. And again, it's some people just don't even know how to do that stuff or they don't want to take the time to, to be bothered with it. So you're you're providing a service for them that they would greatly pay for because A, it works, it gets some new customers and B, they just don't want to be bothered with it. So I find lead generation. Uh, it's just a numbers game. You know, it's how many can you can you put out there and how many can you you know, get on the phone to talk about your services and what, what you can do to provide value for them. The second side gig that I want to talk about is course creation. Now, course creation works in a couple different ways, right? I started out because I had my educational doctorate. I already knew a ton about curriculum development and what a course should look like. The problem that a lot of courses had was they were courses that were made for marketers or to help market businesses or, you know, to, to do social media. And all of these people were experts in that niche. The problem was they didn't know how to teach a course. They didn't know the art of teaching and how to structure curriculum so that it made sense to the person who was purchasing the course, right? Think about just like if we were in college and we were teaching our students a certain topic, not understanding what you're what you're teaching and how you're teaching it, the point's not going to get across. Right? We've got to do things like using storytelling. We've got to do things like, you know, using examples that that fit within the realm and that other people would understand. Um, you know, we, we've got to look at different types of analogies that make sense to the people that we're teaching to. So those are all just things to think about uh, when it comes to course creation. Now, the way to start with course creation, again, is to just take whatever it is you know, what's your expertise, right? That's the start. If you know and love golf and that's your hobby and you're a physical therapist and you love to treat people with golf injuries, well, then by all means, you need to put together some form of course that helps those people, right? You can use that course in a ton of different ways. You can use it as, again, lead generation, right? Hey, download my free course. If you do, uh, you know, it'll help you with this, this, and this. If it doesn't, come on in for a visit. We'll get you checked out and see what's going on, right? The other benefit of a course is it's online, right? So you don't have to worry about seeing patients. You can sell your course online, and people who may not even be in your state are able to buy it, right? You could go international with a course. So it's, it's again, it's another online income. And I don't want to say passive income because none of this stuff is passive, right? I mean, it's all a lot of work up front. And then even on the back end, there's a bunch of work. So, you know, I don't ever call anything passive income. But it's, again, it's you're able to, to educate many people at once 
through your course or even at varying times through your course instead of just the one-on-one -on -one care that you're giving one patient at a time, right? Again, you can still do the patient care. You can do eight hours a day, one patient a piece for eight hours. That'd be great. Nothing wrong with that. But if your course is selling while you're there, well, now we're starting to add a little bit of revenue streams that can help be, you know, allocated for other things like paying off your student loans. Once you've created a course, right, you can then sell that expertise to somebody else. So once you know how to create a course, you can then show other clinicians how to create a course or other businesses how to create a course, right? Again, some people use courses for lead generation. Some people use courses for straight education. Some people use courses, um, you know, to sell uh, just whatever, you know, they're teaching, whatever their, their niche is. But once you've got it down and you know which platform to use and the different platforms and the differences between platforms, uh, you can then take that stuff and kind of turn it into a course on course building, right? It sounds cliche and it sounds ridiculous, but that's what happens. There's people out there that need help. People come to me to help build their course all the time. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things that I love doing just because, again, I'm using my EDD but not in a traditional sense, right? I'm not having to go into those four walls of academia and deal with the red tape and, and deal with the politics. I'm teaching people on things I love to teach and things I'm an expert at, and I'm doing it on my terms, right? So again, it's that fear that I had with the EDD and not using it doesn't really matter because I'm leveraging it to use it in a different way, uh, probably a more lucrative way and also just a, a with I find fun and enjoyable. Um, the other thing too, with, with other people's courses, you can even work on, you know, selling that course with them, right? So uh, most of the courses that I create, um, I take a cut on the back end too. So I'll, I'll charge a fee to set the course up and then I'll charge, you know, 20% of every course sold in perpetuity. So every course that they sell, I'm also collecting on, you know, again, passively, so to speak. Um, it's not passive because I'm, I'm trying to help them sell their courses because it, it's, it benefits me if they make sales as well. So I like to try to help uh, and, and, you know, show people how to market themselves and how to sell their courses. And, you know, I, sometimes I'll even get involved and, and, you know, record the course with them uh, if there's a section or two they need help with and, and that I can be helpful uh, for. Um, the other thing you can do is an affiliate commission, right? If uh, you create a course for somebody, they go off and they start selling it, you can have a link that you can put out to people and say, hey, if you're really interested in golf and golf injuries, here's my buddy Joe's course. Go take that. And here's the link. And every time somebody clicks a link and purchases the course, you get an affiliate commission from that sale. So you may make 20 25% or so or more uh, on the course. And then last but not least, like I talked about, is the one and done for you. So uh, I've created courses from start to finish, done all the, the uh, lead generation stuff, the, the funnel work, and then just handed the course off to the person, and that was it. Um, so there's a bunch of different ways that you can do courses and, and profit and be you know, profitable from those courses. Uh, you just have to know your niche. You just have to you know, kind of find what works for you in your area of specialty. And... Uh, you know, from there, it's 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 all about stepping outside the box and thinking outside the box, but at the same time, still trying to keep that one foot rooted in the area of healthcare. You know, that's a lot of this stuff that I do. I do try to keep that one foot in the boat of healthcare. Try to use that DPT. Try to use the education I got. Uh, you know, but not limited to one-on-one -on -one patient care. That's the main. Thing. Is this making sense to you guys? I hope it is. Uh, if it is, just drop a comment below. Drop a comment. Hashtag makes sense so that I know you guys are with me on this. I can't see all the comments here yet, but I'm working on it. All right, next side gig, number three. And this one has changed in and out for me the last couple of weeks, um, but it's writing. And this is probably one of my favorite ones uh, for a lot of reasons, not just because I was an English major at Wake Forest, like that, that's some of it, but there's so many ways to be profitable with writing. It blows my mind. Uh, let's start with a book, right? I generally recommend that you write a book. 
um, for so many reasons, right? The first one being, A, yeah, you could make sales from the book. I generally make about 50 bucks a month, 60 bucks a month, I think it is, on book sales. Nothing crazy, but again, I haven't done any advertising. I've just done it kind of word of mouth and forwarding it to people who have questions and stuff. But yeah, you make a couple book, uh, book bucks on book sales, you know? But the, the main thing, the big picture with books, you have a story to tell, right? Even if somebody's already written, let's go back to that golf injury uh, idea, right? Let's say you've got an idea on a book you want to write about the best plan for golfers, right? Here's a, a health and wellness plan that I think works. It's what I put together. I've worked on it for many years, and this is the best plan I think you should follow to get optimal golf scores and golf rounds um, out of out of the program, right? Even if that book's been done a hundred times, nobody's going to tell it like you do. You have your own story, which leads to your own thought process and methods, which then leads to your method or, or, you know, whatever you come up with, your plan, your program. And then that leads to other things, right? It leads to in customer engagement. Uh, it's almost like a modern day business card. You can say, well, you know, I wrote the book on it, you know, and literally you did, you know? Uh, so, you know, for me, when people are talking about struggles and issues they're having with, with student loans and, and paying them down, you know, I can literally say, hey, you know, I've got a book that might help you, you know, and I give my book away a handful of times. I'm actually, I'm going to be probably given given two books away um, this week. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later at the end of the, the webinar. But, you know, I, I, I just have this story and I have this method and I have these ideas and, and these processes that I've put into place over the last several years. And I packaged them up all in one nice, neat little a book that I know can help a ton of people. And so it almost got to the point where it felt like it was my duty to write this book and get it out there. And believe me, it took way longer than it should have. It took about eight to 10 months. It probably should have took about three or four, but we had a heck of a 2019 and now 2020s not leading us down, you know, a much better path. But Book sales in general are awesome. Having that calling card, um, you know, depending on what it is, you might be able to use it as a reference tool for doctors in the area to show them and just remind them what you do and the patients that you treat. Uh, I've known a lot of people. Uh, Jeremy Sutton is a, is a great example. He's got a book on uh, neck and back pain. He drops that off on the doctor's desks, you know, for references, for referrals. You know, nobody else is doing that. They're, they're leaving business cards. They're buying lunches. A book is a nice way to show that, hey, I know what I'm talking about. Why don't we talk about, you know, a two-way street here where we refer patients back and forth. Uh, lead magnet. I, I use my book as a lead magnet as well, right? It's got my methods and, and the, the um, streams of revenue that I see fit, that I see are, are worth my time and, and make a, a pretty decent amount of money off of, right? And at the end, it talks about, hey... There's also my masterclass, right? If you want to work with me further, go to the website, right? Go to the site and sign up for the masterclass. Apply apply for that class, right? So it's a lead magnet too, just like Russell Brunson does with uh, .com secrets, expert secrets, now traffic secrets, right? He's, he's warming you up. He's giving you value. He's providing his methods and then saying, if you want to work with me further, go to clickfunnels.com and sign up, right? Um, and again, that's a huge affiliate marketing thing that they do, right? Uh, and then last but not least, speaking gigs, right? Once you've got a book, once you're an authority in something, once you are the expert in that topic, speaking gigs just start opening up. People who have read your book go, man, I love this stuff. I wish I could have that person come speak uh, for me, you know? And I've had two or three speaking gigs now in the last six months open up that I didn't even seek out. They just found me. People emailed me and said, hey, would you come speak to this group or this section about, you know, your your revenue stream stuff. And I said, yeah, absolutely. They said, you know, we, we'd love to, to spread this knowledge. And I was like, yeah, no, I, I would definitely love to do that for you. And, you know, for me, the book came because on the healthcare education transformation podcast, the number one question that we, we ask everybody at the end of the show is if you could change one aspect of higher education, whether it be DPT or otherwise, what would you change and how would you change it? And the number one most given answer is cost. 
it's just too high and it's getting worse. So I, I, like I said, I felt obligated. This was my way to help try to give back to the field of physical therapy and the new students coming up, um, you know, and even some of the old students that are out and struggling right now, because it's not fair to them that we have these, you know, wacky debt to income ratios and, it, you know, we're struggling because of it. It's, it's causing stress. It's causing, you know, bickering between spouses. It's causing people to choose jobs based on the salary or the student repayment plans or whatever it may be. And that just shouldn't be the way, you know, that shouldn't be what we base our, our, our livelihood on, you know. Uh, another thing that you can do with writing is blogging. Um, I did this for every weekday for a full year, about three years ago. And I just did it to, to prove to myself that I could do it. I want to get back into it a little bit more. I've been doing some little blogs here and there, um, but there's a ton of opportunity there. And really all it is, is, is repurposing. It's using posts that you did um, during the week to talk about something and either rewriting them or putting a YouTube video into them and embedding it or, you know, just uh, dictating into your, your phone or whatever. Uh, the podcast episode or whatever you did, you can just take that information and repost it on your blog. And now you've got another area there where you can kind of tweak it and fine tune it. With blogs, right, you have the Amazon affiliate options. So let's say there's a book I really love and I talked about it during the week and I blogged about it. I can put a link in there to my Amazon affiliate for that book. Everybody who purchases that book from my link can, you know, I, I get a small commission off of that. But even if they don't purchase it, if they make a purchase from Amazon and within a 24-hour window, you still get credit for that. So you make a small uh, commission off of Amazon affiliates on your blog. Ads, you could run ads on your blog. Um, I personally don't yet because I haven't found anything that makes sense. I want the ads to be uh, in conjunction and, and, and in the right stream of mind for my audience and for you know people who are looking to pay down student loans. Um, you know, and then you could sell your own stuff on your blog, right? Again, I, I can sell my book on my blog, right? I can sell my course on my blog, other courses that I've written, I can sell when something comes up like that and makes sense. And I write a blog about it. Uh, I can have links right in there to the, the, the courses and the services that I offer and the stuff that I sell. And then last but not least, you could sell other people's stuff on your blog, right? I've got a list on my website of about, I don't know, 10 or 15 trusted uh, friends, peers, uh, people that I've learned from, mentors, uh, and, and all of their courses listed on there as well. So if I feel like somebody could benefit from one of their courses, by all means, I'll refer them to their course. You know, I can't help you, but hey, this guy can. Or I don't know much about that, but this lady over here, she's the one to go to. Click on that, right? Uh, pelvic health. Stuff. That's a big one for me. I don't know anything about that. I know Tracy Sure is the one to go to, you know, and so I'll send people to her her stuff. Um, you know, it's there's just so many options with with generating revenue and income through a blog. And again, it doesn't take too much of your time. You write the blog, you put in a couple of links, and then you leave it be, and it just lives evergreen, right? You've got to do a little bit of social media work and, and let people know the blog is up, and you know, build an audience in order to make it work, but. You know, with, with SEO nowadays, search engine optimization, um, that gets a lot easier, you know, and all, all it takes is, is some time on YouTube, right? YouTube University and learning about that stuff. Um, and if you don't know it, and you can't do it. Go ahead and pay somebody to do it, right? Outsource it. Copywriting. This is a big one. Uh, I thought that because I was an English major, I was going to be an amazing copywriter. I was not. Uh, I it, it's, it, it's almost like a whole nother language I'm learning. Uh, and it took me about three months and about 10 books to get just a general baseline grasp on, on good copy. Um, and, and copy is basically just, you know, writing stuff to sell something, right? Or writing something to help purchasers become more educated in the situation, right? Um, there is a list that I've created at pteducator.com backslash copy. Um, that'll give you that list of the 10 books that I read that really helped me learn this stuff and get a grasp on it. Uh, and I'll go back and drop the, the link somewhere in the, in the, uh, the webinar here uh, on the replay um, because I can't see all the, 
the comments now, but um, copywriting, essentially the way you can benefit and, and profit from copywriting, uh, email sequences, right? So like if a, if a physical therapy company, and I, I did one of these a couple of weeks ago, physical therapy company was coming back and opening back up after COVID, um, and they wanted to talk about a lot of different things. But one, here's what we went through. Here's how we're handling the soft reopening. The third email was, here's ways to protect yourself from COVID. The fourth email was, here's some general health tips you should practice COVID or not. You know, sleep, eating, water, things like that, just general stuff. And then the fifth, sixth, and seventh emails were um, ones that they would kind of shift. One was a knee pain, one was a back pain, and one was a shoulder pain, I think. So it was the same email sequence. And then the last one kind of separated out the people, the prior uh, patients, just to let them know what was going on. And, you know, I got paid pretty handsomely for that email sequence, and it wasn't that much work. Um, I had the time, so I just sat there and wrote it out. Landing pages, uh, again, sales pages and websites. If you go back to search engine optimization, if you are trying to create a website for your clinic or for another clinic, let's say, and you want people to come and find it, you know, you want to show up in, in Google in those top three uh, search engine areas, you've got to have good good copy, right? You've got to have blogging on there. You've got to have all the keywords on the website, you know, that, that you need to keep showing up when people search. I need blank in my area, right? I need physical therapy in Pittsburgh or, you know, I need, uh, how do I fix shoulder pain in Delaware, right? Like when people Google this stuff, that's how they're Googling it. And your copy will help bring those websites to the front, you know, the forefront. Um, so copywriting, like I said, it's um, it's harder than it looks, but it's easy to learn. Uh, and then once you learn it and get a good grasp on it, uh, there's a ton of really good books out there. A lot of people that are really good at it. Uh, it, it just is a different language and it takes a little bit of learning to, to figure it out. But once you do, you can start writing email sequences and landing pages and things that will convert uh, and get a ton of new patients or, or new clients uh, for your businesses. So once you get it going on your business, again, from there, you can then offer it to other people uh, and show your skills and services to other businesses. And then last but not least on the writing is the children's book. Um, I've just finished my children's book uh, a couple weeks ago. Well, no, it was more than that. It was probably two months ago now. Um, and I sent it off to the illustrator, who is a good, good friend of mine from high school, He's working on the, the children's book now, and he's getting all the, the pictures ready. So that's going to release pretty soon. But I think a children's book is a great way to do a lot of things at once, right? Oh, thank you. I had to take a sip there for a minute. The first thing is, look, it opens up your audience, right? If you write about, um, let's just, again, go back to that golf injury uh, example. You get children interested in books at an early age, right? Uh, golf at an early age, uh, injuries and how to prevent them at an early age, stretching, health, wellness. Those are all ways to kind of, you know, get children involved. Plus it brings the parents into, right? But it also increases your, your touch points over a longer, longer, longer period of time, right? If you can get parents and children hooked on your stuff at an early age, They'll just keep seeing everything you're doing. They'll follow you on social media. They'll share your stuff out, and, and it'll just grow and grow and grow. Again, a children's book is kind of a long play. Uh, will you make some sales on it right off the bat? Yeah, and children's books, man, they are not cheap. They go for anywhere from 15 to 25 bucks. So, you know, you're probably going to make a decent commission on each one sold. But again, the thought process is if I get them started early, they'll just keep following me and following me over the longer period of time. And the parents and the children will eventually, you know, come to you when they need something or know that you're the guy to go to or the gal to go to if, you know, your niche matches up with what they need. So that's why I like children's books. Uh, they're kind of easy to write. If you feel like you can't write your own book just yet, start with the children's book maybe, right? Go the Dr. Seuss method. Come up with 24 pages worth of rhyme. Uh, talking about your niche and what you're doing, and then publish it. Put it out there. Self-publish it on Amazon. It's super simple. Um, and then tackle the big book. 
because I like I said, I know you got it in you. Um, and it's it's worth doing, I promise. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how to get these side gigs out there, right? You've got these three major side gigs that can make some money now, but how do we offer these services, right? We think we know what we're doing. We got it down, and now we need to figure out how to sell it, right? Well, the first place to start is your network, right? You want people that you talk to every day, people who you go to work with, um, you know, local businesses you interact with, people who you know need those services that you can just talk to and have a conversation with, pick up the phone with, see it, you know, up the corner or whatever. So your network is the first place to start, like your actual physical surrounding network, right? The next place, paid traffic. Again, we talked about needing lead generation. Well, we need lead generation as well, right? So Facebook ads explaining what we do, Google ads explaining, you know, what our services are. If you're interested, click here. Um, those are a great way to get, you know, people who need your services and, and who are looking for you, right? Facebook ads is kind of a colder audience. They don't really know you, what you're doing, um, but you're offering that service. And if they're interested, they'll click. Google ads, on the other hand, they search for what it is you're doing. So they're a little bit warmer audience. The other way you can do this, referral partners, right? If you know somebody who does a service and you do a different service, but you use them, you say, hey, maybe we can work out a referral gig, right? I have a guy who does the covers for my books, right? My first book, I, I pushed out real quick. I didn't have time. The cover was kind of a disaster. I kind of hate it. Doesn't matter. I had to get it out there that week. It needed to be done. I was pressed up against a timeline. So I pushed the book out. Now, since then, I've hired a professional cover artist to redo that cover, and then he's going to do my next four books as well. We've already got the titles lined up. We've got everything in order. We're ready to kind of start working on book number two, um, and he he's going to do all my books. Now, if, if somebody who I know is writing a book and needs help with a cover, I send them to him, and if they end up working together, I get a kickback, right? I get a referral fee. So referral partnerships are, are a great way to get your marketing stuff out there somewhat organically, you know, and, and you may end up benefiting from it. If you refer people over their way, you get paid off that as well, right? And then last but not least, your social media network. This one's huge because, again, it can be, you know, kind of paid stuff, but a lot of it is, is organic, right? You've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, you can just post out there what you're doing, what you're working on. Hey, look at this result I got for this client. Hey, I was working on this the other day. Hey, look how it came out. Hey, if anybody, you know, needs this service, I'm doing it, you know, and then groups, right? Facebook groups. Uh, those are huge because those are, you know, it's like uh, soccer moms, right? They have that, that herd mentality. If one of them finds a service they love, they get in there, they talk all about it and they brag about it. Now, all of a sudden, all the soccer moms are wanting to go there and do that service, you know? And so... Facebook groups are a big one. You want to be in the groups that are kind of lined up with your niche. And you don't want to be, you know, selling your propaganda in there and asking people to come, come, come and see your stuff. But you do want to be able to, to, to answer questions and to be there for people and provide value for people. Um, this way, when they do know, oh, that guy always helps people with search engine optimization. Oh, that guy's the SEO guy. Oh, I know this guy. He does SEO. That's all he does, right? You want to be known as the person who's always answering those questions and who's always there to help. And then eventually people will come to you and ask for your services and your help. So some of the other side gigs that are mentioned in my book um, that are not on that top three list are, again, opening your own practice, right? If you're in the medical field, opening your own practice makes a lot of sense, Um for me, it was the mobile practice, and I was charging about $200 per hour per visit for an eval, and then $175 for follow-ups. It was cash pay, 100% at network. Um, you know, things were pretty good uh, until COVID came along, and then everything kind of ceased, and I just kind of pulled back on it. I stopped all all of my uh, my marketing for it, and I just kind of said, you know, if anybody needs me. Let me know. Call me. We'll talk about it. But it's only, you know, I'm not taking any new referrals. It'll only be current patients uh, and prior patients and, uh, you know, word of mouth type referral. You've got to know somebody to, to get in. Um, 
and understandable. People are nervous. People are afraid that, you know, they, they don't want people coming into their homes and possible, you know, spreading of the virus and stuff. So I totally get that. Uh, podcasting, like we talked about, we had uh, for the HET podcast, we had both a sponsor of the podcast that paid for a uh, weekly. We did one show a week and we would do a uh, commercial every week. We've since increased that to two episodes a week. Um, hasn't been as consistent as we want, so we want to bump that back up and really work on that and, and see what kind of deals we can work with sponsors for that. Uh, a lot of that depends on your audience and the numbers that you have, but um, not always. Um, you know, some of it's speculative, too, because podcasts are highly undervalued right now. So people don't know what to charge for them. And so people are getting great deals. Um, and you can you can work on a podcast uh, sponsor before you've got the numbers. So don't don't let that stop you. And the other deal that we worked with uh, the podcast was an affiliate deal where everybody who used our code HT when signing up with the um, uh, telehealth company, uh, we got a portion of their their uh, membership every month uh, that they were active. So that was another pretty pretty cool deal that we worked with uh, the podcast. Consulting consulting was a big one for me, and I want to get back on that. Um, I currently have a um, hundred dollar a month consulting deal where I do two 30 minute, uh, phone calls, uh, for the month. And then I've got another consulting deal, uh, coming up at the end of the month, uh, which is a injury prevention type education course. And that'll be, I think that ends up being about $4,000 for, uh, two hours worth of education on body mechanics, proper lifting, injury prevention, repetitive motion, avoidance, stuff like that. Um, and I, I had been doing that for two or three years now. So occasionally one of those pops up. Um, teaching. Teaching's a big one. I would say with teaching, you know, I do adjunct work on occasion. Um, I do online courses, right? Um, and then I do, I try to do some, some live webinars like this one. Um, because again, teaching is important to me. I love it. I love to do it, but I like to do it on my terms and in my time. Uh, social media management, that's a good one. We talked about that. You could even throw that in with lead generation, right? Uh, hey, I'll get you three, 30 leads a month. And also I noticed you didn't have much of a digital footprint. I can also do your social media management. Uh, one post in Twitter, one post in Instagram, one post in Facebook for an extra 500 bucks for the month. I'll do one a week, every week, something like that, you know? And then last but not least, speaking and coaching. Um, speaking gigs have been starting to pick up a little bit for me. I'm excited about that. I want to do more speaking. I want to help more people with, with, you know, paying down their student loans. Uh, and so speaking is a good way to do that. Coaching, obviously, like I said, I've been doing that for other people for the last couple of years. And now I'm finally starting to kind of do it on my own. So. This brings us to the point here where I talked about earlier in the, the webinar here. There, there's two main options here, and, and I hope that I was able to bring you guys some value with this with this webinar. If I was, go ahead and comment value down below. Um, you can take this information that I've given you and run like the wind, get into that implementation phase, and just crush it, right? Get your streams of revenue up and running. You know, Use the feel-good method. Get your streams prioritized from left to right. Get your checklist of things that you have to do and just start creating revenue. Um, you know, and and another one that you can use is the book club, right? The the Professors of Profit book club. That can be found at pteducator.com backslash book club. It's four biz business books that have helped me start my businesses and really get them up and running. I've gone to the first two this month, uh, Thursday of this week. The third one we'll, we'll talk about, and that one's Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson. Um, you can use those books. Those are a great reference. I use them to kind of get things going. Uh, they really help with, with the vision that I had and, and help me get going in my businesses. And then the other option, option number two, is you can work directly with me in my masterclass where I help you implement the Feel Good Method into your business uh, start a new business if you don't have one yet. Not a problem. We can get that up and running very quickly. Um, and it's more of a hand-holding thing, right? It's more of a step-by-step -step method uh, where we layer the streams of revenue, and I kind of show you how to do that. You tell me what your niche is. You tell me what your interests are. You tell me what would be the ideal side hustle and side gig for you and, and what you want to do in order to pay down those student loans quicker, and we turn it into a business that's profitable and can help 
make payments toward those student loans to get them paid off quicker. I offer to you, if you decide to go through the master class, you'll get eight weeks of the master class, right? And it covers, uh, you know, your own business, writing, podcasting, teaching and educating, consulting, digital marketing, speaking, and coaching, as well as a couple of other random ones at the very end. Those are all of the side gigs that I'm currently doing and that are currently bringing me in revenue to help pay down those student loans quicker. You get eight weekly live group sessions uh, with others just like you that are in the same situation that are just looking to pay down those student loans, um, that are looking to create a new revenue stream that's not too time demanding. Uh, it's something outside of the nine to five, but it brings in extra revenue. Right. And those weekly lives are good, not only because, you know, we go off of the week and what's being taught that week, um, you know, but the others in the group are, are very helpful, too, because they bring their experiences and knowledge in, in conjunction with with what I'm teaching, too. So it's it's a really great live group. It's a good feel. Um, you get four 30 minute power calls with me throughout the eight week sessions. We can use those to talk about you know, certain specific roadblocks or speed bumps that you're running into, um, you know, anything that you want to talk about from a business standpoint or even just life in general standpoint, you know, that's what we use those power calls for. Because sometimes you just need to talk to somebody and vent to kind of get things going and realize what's going on and how you're going to get past things and how you're going to move and push your business to the next level. You'll get a personalized copy of my book, PT Educator Student Debt Eliminator. Uh, send that up to you as soon as as soon as you're into the master class uh, and then last but not least you'll get access to a private facebook group for master class purchasers only and that'll be each cohort moving forward gets uh, put into that class it's a place that, you know that really just a safe place to be where you can talk about wins and losses problems you're having speed bumps you know and it's kind of a, a collaborative brainstorm uh which i love that group uh, and i love how supportive they all are of each other so that is the offer. Like I said, if you are interested, if this sounds like a good fit for you, I want you to go ahead and comment good fit. Um, I will send this link. I'll put it in the comments once we wrap up here. Um, if you guys have any questions, now would be the time to ask. I hope that, like I said, I was able to provide some value for you guys. I was able to keep it to about an hour. Uh, Ran a little bit over here, but let's see if we can't minimize this screen here. And let's get to some of the questions. If I can find where you guys are with your comments. All right, excellent. Got the comments up and running again. So for all of you that have any comments, now would be the time. Like I said, I'd love to take questions. Uh, if there's anything that I can answer for you, um, I'd love to, to take the next couple of minutes to sit here and I'll, I'll be here as long as you guys need. If, if there's anything you want to know about terms of revenue, fire away. I'm here as long as you guys need for the night. I can't see all of the comments, but I can see most of them, it looks like. I wonder as well if I can pull up Facebook to see them there, because I haven't, haven't done that very successfully. Let's see here. There we go. There is the group. This has been a really, really fun time tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm super thankful for you guys for being here and for letting me come on and, and talk about the things that I love to, to educate folks on. There we go. All right, cool. I can see the comments much better in here. Um, yeah, anything I can you know answer, anything you guys want to know more about. Let's see. If one is not working current, which of the income will you recommend? Uh, yeah, Grace, you know, if you have the time, lead generation has got to be the best bang for your buck. It doesn't take much to get 
started on that. Like I said, it took me about four to six hours in one weekend just to learn the process. Um, and then just, you know, luckily now technology's made things super easy. There is, um, there's some uh, apps called D7 Lead Finder and Hunter.io. Uh, and those help you with lists of businesses that you can just literally email or cold call um, and ask, if, you know, they need your services. And then it becomes a numbers game, right? You, not everybody's going to want your services, but for the most part, uh, you know, people will at least be interested. They'll come back and ask you questions. Uh, the replay, there will be a replay. Um, I'm not terribly certain where it's going to be hosted yet, but what, what I'll do is I'll, everybody who was on any portion of this, uh, there'll be an email that gets sent out that has the direct link to the replay. So tonight will be replayed if you missed parts of it or uh, if you had further questions and you wanted to just watch it over again. Or the big thing that you guys could do for me too is if anybody that you know has uh, high student loan debt or you think they could benefit from this kind of stuff, uh, send them over the link to the replay. Um, that would be super helpful because, like I said, I'm just trying to help as many people as I can uh, to pay down these student loans because, uh, I know it sucks the, you know, but I, I, what I've done is kind of gamified it. And I, you know, like I said, I started out, uh, I, I call it my, my golden number is where I started and that was 140,000 and it looked unsurmountable and ridiculous. And now my magic number, how much I have left. Uh, and like I said, I think that's down to about 118 or so. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty certain that, uh, I can get that down in, in the next three years tops. I don't even think it'll take me that long, to be honest with you. And the reason for that is I've been on an income-driven repayment plan. And like I said at the beginning, guys, I'm not a student loan expert. What I do know is that I took the responsibility for the loans that I took out, and now I'm trying to pay them off as quick as I can. And I went to Fitbox and Joe Ranke, and I said, hey, what, you know, what program looks best for me? That's a great place to start because they'll tell you everybody's got a different situation. And they'll tell you, you know, what, what path to take. So I went on income driven repayment plan. It dropped my payments from 1700 a month down to 700 a month. And it just stretched it out over like 25 years or something. So I'm not going to pay these loans for 25 years. Like I said, my plan is to make as much money as possible and, uh, and pay them off in, in three at, at the, at the most. So Michael, good to see you. Uh, sorry you missed most of this. Uh, yes, there's going to be a replay, so don't even sweat it. I'll, I was just telling Grace I will um, I will send the link for the replay uh, as soon as I get it recorded and put wherever it's going to be hosted. So have no fear. Uh, the replay will be here, I promise. Um, any other questions for the night? Um, like I said, I'll put the link in here. I can actually drop the link right in here. Uh Let's see for the uh, application process uh, like I said if, if you guys feel like you know this is a good fit for you if you feel like uh, you know it's right up your alley and you want to work further with me um, this link right here will bring you to an application uh, where you can apply for the master class so feel free to, to click on that link and to um, to, to put in an application uh, we'll kind of review that and see where you're at and see if you're a good fit. Uh, because I, I want it to make sense for both of us, right? It, it doesn't make sense. Uh, if I don't think I can help you, I, it, it doesn't make sense for me to work with you, you know, but I do, I might know other people that, that could help you with what you're looking for and what you're looking to do. Uh, in which case I'd be glad to refer you on to them. So I want to make sure it's a good fit for both of us. Any other questions? Comments, concerns. Man, I love this stuff. This is, like I said, this is what gets my gears going in the morning. This is what, this is what gets me out of bed every morning. I love writing about it. I love teaching it. I love uh, educating people. Do I help technology? Yes. Um, most of the stuff that I do uh, is not technology uh, based. Um, in that. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Yeah, I didn't know a lot of this stuff. Um, 
three years ago. So uh, anything technology wise, I had to learn and uh, trust me, it's all very simple. Aspen, this was great. So glad you enjoyed it. I'm, I'm hoping that it again provided some value for you guys. Um, because like I said, I, I know there's a lot of people out there struggling with this stuff and truth be told, there's more opportunity now than I've seen in a really long time. So now is the time to, to try to hop on this and, and, you know, make the most out of it because the next two to three years, I think are going to be the golden years to cash in on a lot of these side incomes and, and, most of it is just using the skills we already have as healthcare clinicians, right? If I'm going to write a blog about shoulder injuries because I love the shoulder so much and that's my expertise and overhead sports, I already know all that stuff. I already know what I'm going to blog about. I already know the articles to refer to, the books to refer to. All I got to do is put it in a blog form or written form and then attach a couple of affiliate links in there and boom, now it's profitable, you know? So that's the stuff that I'm working on. Uh, I'm going to try to put a lot more value and information here in the Professors of Profit in, um, Facebook group. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's about it for the night. If there's any anything else I can answer, anything else I can help with, by all means, drop it in here, and I'll come back and kind of answer some of the questions along the way and, and just uh, check in on everybody that, that was in here on the webinar. So. Thank you guys so much. Uh, it's been a pleasure and have a wonderful evening. Stay cool out there uh, and stay safe. Uh, it's still a crazy world out there. We're not out in the clear yet. So hoping everybody uh, a healthy and wealthy evening and uh, rest of the month. And we'll talk again soon, guys.